Very good morning, family in Jesus. Um, it's time again to take our Bibles and get into the Word, see what the Word of God has for us this morning. If you want to follow with, I'm going to be reading out of the book of Philippians. So the book of Philippians, um, Paul is here writing a letter to the churches. He's encouraging them. He's motivating them. Um, and, and the piece that we are going to be reading this morning is... Again, staying with the topic, it's going to be on the second coming of Christ or, or at least when we see Christ face to face again. So if you want to follow this morning, I'm going to be reading out of Philippians chapter 1. And we're going to be reading, starting to read from um, 18b. So the last section in eight, verse 18b. So... Paul says there, yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. So he's talking here about him being imprisoned and, and about him um, doing it and suffering for Jesus Christ. Verse 20, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always Christ will be exalted in my body, whether I live or whether I die. And here family, we touched a little bit on this uh, Sunday evening, courage. Courage, courage is, is what we need. Um, here, Paul is trying to describe to the church that, you know, it's, it's easier to live out there where they were living, with the freedom that they had. There, sometimes, um, out there, when you have everything, you've got a job and you've got family and support and friends and you can go to the church um, and you can worship God and there's, there's no persecution. There, it's easy to say that, yeah, maybe you don't need courage there. Because everything is for free. But there where Paul was sitting, where maybe every single day he was beaten and, and he was persecuted. And maybe he wasn't fed every day. You know, in... Situations like that, family, that is where we must have courage. When we are slandered and persecuted and, and put down because of, not, not because of the foolish things that we sometimes say, but in this case, because we fully serve the Lord. And here Paul comes and he says, I've got sufficient courage for this. I, I, can, I can do this. And then he goes further. In verse 22, uh, verse 21, for to me, to live is um, Christ and to die is a gain. Verse 22, if I am to go on living in this body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I don't know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it's more necessary for you that I remain in this body. Now, family here, and again, we spoke about this on Sunday evening. You know, as someone that, that, that um, the Lord has called to uh, build churches and to um, uh, uh, shepherd his people, I am absolutely, not only do I love the church, I am in love with the, the, the church. I love building the church. And I can't see my life outside of building a church. And here Paul is saying the same. He says, you know, I, I really want to go home. I don't mind dying because then I'm going to be with Christ. But because I love you so much and we are walking this journey together. Um, it will be better for you if I stay with you. Because maybe Paul saw that they weren't really yet ready for 
for him to leave the, the earth. Because maybe they were still battling with something and maybe they, they weren't fully trained in running New Testament churches. So yeah, Paul says, you know, it would be better for me if I die and I go home. But it would be better for you if I stay with you. Maybe some of them or the majority of them could not yet hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And, and Paul just wanted to make sure um, of that. Verse 25, convinced of this. I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that um, through uh, my being with you again, your boasting in Christ will abound on account of me. So again here Paul is saying, you know, I'm not doing this for myself. Family, and, and, and church, he's saying to them, please, you, you must see that I'm not doing this for myself. I want to go home. I want to die and I want to be with Christ. Or not want to, but I, I, don't, uh, I don't mind dying and departing because then I'm going to be with Christ. But while I am here, I am not here for myself. While I'm here, I'm here for you. I'm here to encourage you and to motivate you to... To, to edify you. I'm here to build you up in God's kingdom, not in yourself. Um, family, this, this isn't a self-help book. Yes, it fixes us, but it doesn't cause us to concentrate only on ourselves. And that is what Paul is saying here to, to them. You know, while I'm with you, I am with you for you to, to get you as the church to a place where Jesus Christ wants you to be and to get you to a place where we are ready when Jesus calls us. And so family, one thing that jumped out in this scripture here is when Paul said, I, I've got the courage. And this morning, family, I, I pray and I hope and I trust that each one of us will have the courage. Because as we read in 2 Timothy uh, Sunday evening, in the last days, there are going to be terrible times. And family, it's coming. It's ramping up to that. If you know anything about the prophecies and the word of God, you will know that we are nearing the end days. And the Bible teaches us that in the end days, it will be like a woman with labor pains. You know, labor pains, family, with a woman, it, it starts off small. It's just small pain, small pain, and then... Further along the line, a few hours, maybe a few days further, those pains start to grow. It gets more intense. The, the, the woman can't walk up straight any, anymore. It, it really gets to a point where the pains are severe. But it started off small. And this is what is happening in the last days, family. And if your eyes are open spiritually, you can see this happening everywhere. You know... With everything that is happening in the world now, um, the world has successfully divided two groups of people. And the world, the governments of the world, have caused these two groups of people to stand up against each other. So it's now not um, saved and unsaved anymore. Now it's a, a, a split group of people and family. Those people are now hurt. It doesn't matter which group they are in. They are feeling that hurt. And as a church, as the body of Christ, we are to be there for both groups. We are to be there for them. We must take them because family, they don't know where's the way out, which way to go. And I am here this morning to say to you, as the body of Christ, as, as the church of Jesus, Family, we are there to take them and to show them the way, and the way is Jesus. And so for that, we need courage, family, because there's going to be people that are going to stand up against us, against the church, against you as disciple of Jesus. And so this morning, family, I want to encourage you. I, I really want to, I want to motivate you and, and um, strengthen you through the truth of the word of God. Stand up, family. 
Stand up and have courage. Have courage in and through Jesus. Um, yes, sometimes we don't have courage in ourselves. It's difficult, family, when you have to stand up and face something that is violent, something that is completely against the way that we were raised and the way that we were taught. And it's coming, family. Violent times are coming. The Bible says it. In the last days, there are going to be terrible times. And so we have to be ready for it. And that readiness is in our courage, family. It's in our courage just before um, Father God allowed uh, Joshua to lead the new generation of Israelites into the promised land Canaan. He said to him, be strong and have courage. Be strong and have courage because Father God knew what he was going to have to face. They didn't walk into the promised land family and receive everything on a silver platter for free without any effort. They had to fight. They, they had to go to war. And this is what we are in right now. We are in a spiritual battle family and we need courage for it. The Lord needs soldiers. The Lord needs people who don't mind going into war. And by the way, family, when we go into war, we don't go in it for ourselves. We go in it for the church, for the body of Christ, for the people around us. And so family, this morning, I want to call on you, have courage. Have courage, just like Paul said here. Stand up, family, and have the courage that Jesus has birthed in you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, your son, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the gifts that the Holy Spirit has deposited in us that are not ours. We are only um, uh, permitted to use them for your, your kingdom and for the Holy Spirit. They don't belong to me, Lord. They belong to the Spirit of God and I am a steward of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so this morning, Lord, in recognition of that, may we stand up as the body of Christ and as the church. And may we use those gifts, Lord, to advance your kingdom, to further your kingdom, not, not, to, not to show myself off, Lord. Not to go and announce how many spiritual gifts I have. It's not about that, Father. It's about building your kingdom. I must just be the vessel. That is it. Just the vessel, Lord. And so, Father God, I pray that today, for those of us who feel we don't have the courage to stand up against what is here now and what is about to come, I pray in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that right now, Lord, that the Spirit of God will lay hands on those people and and imprint and impart um, Jesus Christ courage in them. Lord Jesus, you, you are God. And when you walked on earth, you were God, but you were man as well, Lord. And Jesus, I cannot start to imagine the amount of courage that it took to carry that cross to where you had to be crucified for us, Lord. And so we pray that you will bless us with just a little bit of that courage, Lord. That we don't have to carry a physical cross these days. Yes, a spiritual one. But Lord, that is, that is sometimes far, far, far easier than what you had to do, Lord. And so we pray in this day, Lord, that we will stand up, that we will be disciples, that we will have courage, and that we will face what is coming. We thank you for that, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pray and we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, brother and sister in Christ. Um, again this morning, thank you for joining us. Um, I, I trust, because the word of God is powerful, I trust that the word of God would have uh, filled you this morning, uh, inspired you, motivated you to take that next step. Um, I also want to encourage you, family, sit down. Take your, your Bible today. Don't, don't wait until tomorrow. Maybe there isn't a tomorrow. Sit down today. Um, spend time with the Holy Spirit. Ask the Spirit of God where you must open this beautiful book.
for him to show you, teach you, guide you, lead you um, into your next step with him. So until we meet again tomorrow, be absolutely blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.